Welcome back. Overstock.com surprising Wall Street investors last night, swinging to a profit in the fourth quarter. Revenue also coming in above expectations. Take a look at the stock uh, at $16.60 a share. Joining us right now is Overstock.com founder and CEO Patrick Byrne. And good to see you, Patrick. You brought your Bitcoin hat. <laughs> Good to be seen, Maria. Great. Yes, thanks for having me on. I wanted to ask you about the Bitcoin hat. You don't have to take it off. We okay. love it. We love it. Come on. Okay. Um, let Go me ahead. ask you about, about business. Obviously, we're seeing earnings really drive the story. How would you characterize the quarter and, and, the, and the demand side of the picture out there? I think things are actually rockier in our economy than the official uh, government statistics suggest. I'm not quite sure how that can be. Maybe they're not telling us the truth. We did okay. We, uh, the, the digital marketing landscape is shifting very quickly. Um, so it's been a, it, was, it was a good season for us. We made lots of money. We beat everybody's expectations. Uh, fifth profitable year in a row. I got to point out we're one of, I think, two consistently profitable dot-com e-tailers. Uh, but I think the economy is actually quite a bit rockier than, than somehow this official statistics suggest. Do you think things change in, in a substantial way with the policies that we're all expecting, that is, lower taxes and a rollback of regulations? Do you think that impacts things? That will impact things if we can, if, uh, we can have time for those policies to work. And it'll take a year or two for the labor market and different things to respond to that. And if we have enough time that we don't have some other sort of dislocative event, like in 2008, in the meantime, those policies in a year or two could start having a nice, strong effect on demand and the economy in general. And Patrick, Don Peebles, um, what do you think happens um, with the uh, trade policies, this reform of trade policy to where uh, President Trump wants us to uh, make it much more difficult for our, um, our products to be manufactured, say, in China and other parts of the world. What does that have um, in terms of an impact on our retail business and also our, our trade business? Well, if he is successful, it will just raise prices for American consumers on overseas products, which is the point. And they will shift their consumption to domestically made products, which will be more competitive. It's kind of odd because here the United States has since World War II been banging down the doors of the world, creating this global order, telling people that they've, countries have got to be open to free flow of goods and capital and often people. And here we are the ones, you know, other, other countries have been cleaning our clocks. And, and I'm not sure they don't deserve to. I was just in Singapore where the folks work 60-hour weeks and they save 40% of what they make and the kids go to school on Saturday. I'm not sure why they, we don't expect them to win over time. Uh, so I think that uh, it's just ironic that here we have built, we, we have spent, spent decades building a global order that we are now def uh, threatening to defect from. Uh, this is a really important point and a, and a subject. I mean, the retailers have been, you know, reluctant to talk really about the detail of the implications of, let's say, for example, a border adjustment tax, Patrick. Can you talk us through the implications of a border adjustment tax, what that means for retail? Sure. It, it means if, they, if there's a border adjustment tax of 20% on goods from China, uh, we import half a billion dollars a year or more of goods from China, the price of those that we will charge our consumers will have to go up 20%. But, you know, we have a very agile 95% of our products we don't touch. We're not like a big box where you've got these big supply chains. Our supply chain is all photons and electrons. So it just means that, you know, we have other suppliers of those products They'll be that are domestic, and those products will suddenly look more competitive. So and for a company like ours, it's very easy for our ad its supply chain to be agile and shift around in response to these kinds of policy changes. It's going to be much more difficult for brick and mortar retailers with big fixed supply chains back to Asia to be agile and respond. Our, our stuff will just sort of shift automatically as consumers change their behavior. Okay. So you've said that you don't think that Donald Trump is a real businessman. Um, tell me what you think about his policies now. Do you still, do you still think that? Do you think he's going to be business friendly? Well, I did say that. That was during the election. A lot of things get said. I, you know, I, I saw him during the election more as a Kim Kardashian that got it. You know, Kim Kardashian made hundreds of millions of dollars on reality TV. I didn't want her to be president either. 
but he got elected fair and square, and I actually I'm one of those few, I guess, who feel just I was actually on Fox the night Barack Obama got elected, and I told everybody on Fox that night, you know, he, he didn't elect himself, he got elected, and I think we owe him a chance. I think that uh, I felt the same way about Donald Trump. There are a lot of reasons I was against him being president. I supported the Libertarian candidate, but he got he didn't elect himself. We elected him, and he's owed a chance. I I wish. You know, if we're grading them on substance or style, I have different grades. If we're grading them on substance, I agree with some of his policies. I totally support school choice. Uh, I love the Neil Gorsuch and the idea that we'll have 107 vacancies in the federal judiciary filled by 107 clones wow. yeah. of Clarence Thomas. But his style has got to change. Patrick, really great insights. We so appreciate it. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you, Maria. And we didn't even get to Bitcoin. You've got to come back soon. <laughs> Patrick Thorne. I bring that hat.